Okay, and we're back at it again. Hopefully today our, our Japanese friend will figure out to get his aircraft out of the way in Burma and Thailand. Feel bad about feel bad about that last turn, man. I don't I don't get it. But let's see how this one goes. Okay, no night bombing this turn. I assume that the uh, moonlight's pretty low. Okay, we got some daylight here. Let's see if something happens. Coast Watchers. Okay, so this is the American Sculpin, and it caught up to the Amagiri, which is a Japanese destroyer. A pretty, a pretty good one too. Uh, it appears this this destroyer is on ASW patrol in the Makassar Strait. Nothing really comes of this. Oh, hmm. So a second second attempt here. The Sculpin fires some torpedoes, but either due to the maneuverability of the destroyer or a Mark 14 failure, uh, no hits. And again, no, no, no additional contact there. Four torpedoes wasted on the Amagiri. Here we go. AM phase air operations. Hmm. Do you see that? Japanese sub south of Adak. All right, so we got uh, Oscar sweeping over Lanchow. We can expect large bombing attacks on Lanchow today. We're way gun shy here, so he's going to send a lot of aircraft to do this. Okay, so now Desert Wolf is sweeping over Macon in in. Advance of bombing raid coming in. Okay, so that's two squadrons so far. Three squadrons. So he's not he's not taking any chances because Desert Wolf saw those hundred fighters uh, at Millie, which is north. So he's not messing around here with this. All right, look at those bombers, 150 bombers. Lanchow's gonna take some heavy damage this turn. Yeah, look at that. That's a pretty decent bombing right here. A lot of disabled units. Okay, we got some bombers heading in to hit that hex. Uh, just to the west of Changte. Very little to show for it. Alright, nothing. Uh, the weather is bad. The terrain is bad. These bombing raids are not super effective. Yeah, more Sonya's coming in. They're just not doing anything. Uh, again, I, 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 I'm, I wonder if these Sonyas are even worth using in this, in this region. They burn supply, but they're not doing anything to the, to the units. I know he probably wants to just use these things up, but they're just not. Not getting it done. Look at the size of this raid at Pegu. You know what's interesting to me here is that um, 
Desert Wolf didn't even go in a sweep or anything. He just went in cold turkey with these bombers. He's feeling so bold right now. Um, with the lack of action from a weirway that he's just willing to send these bombers in without any kind of sweep or escort now. And these bombers absolutely level this unit, man. The 15th Engineering Regiment took huge losses during this raid. And we're going to have some stragglers feeding in here for a while. Uh, Pig, who I believe is clear terrain, so you're going to take heavy losses from bombers when you come in like this. Look at this. This is a good raid. Yeah, look at these losses. Wow! That unit is getting decimated. That's what, 700 casualties so far, and probably more coming. Wow, look at the losses here. <gasps> Dude, this regiment is going to be absolutely plastered. My goodness, man, it's just that it's just no stopping it. These losses are absolutely just horrendous for the Japanese. And there's more. This is a maximum effort bombing raid by Desert Wolf. He is so good at picking out these targets, right? Every turn he's just hitting another place that's underdefended and causing heavy losses to wear away. Look at these losses. Now we're going straight into non-combat and engineer destroyed squads. That's bad. All right, AM phase is done, and boy, that was a bad phase for the Japanese in, in Burma. Mm. Oh, okay. Patrol boat hit out there. Oh, here comes the sweep at Pegu. <laughs> a little late, buddy. And again, I wonder what happened there. The bombers went up before the fighters. That's not supposed to work that way. Uh, I guess it's good that the Japanese weren't in this hex this turn because uh, those bombers would have hit a lot of fighters and these guys are coming in and sweep in the afternoon when they should have gone up in the morning. Yep, these guys are really late to the party. Let's see if we can fast forward through some of these recon missions here. Alright, and we go right into ground combat. And a deliberate... Oh, this is not going to be pretty. Uh, I don't know about this one. So, Weirway thinks he's softened these guys up enough. I don't think he did. I don't see this going well for the Japanese, but let's let's see. <laughs> oh, oof. That's a big oof. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, I called this one, man. I totally called this. Didn't I? Didn't I? Didn't I say this over like the last week that there's no way the Japanese are going to break through with this hex? And there you go. Three to one casualties for the Japanese here. Big losses. Big losses for sure. Um, Look at the adjusted here. One to 16. This is this is a no-fly zone for the Japanese, man. You're not getting through here. I don't see how they would ever get through like this. Look at this. What a slaughter. And look at there's tanks, there's tank units in here and everything, and they are not effective. Mm, these stacking limits are really hurtful for the Japanese or anybody on the attack, but look at this. Jeez. 
that's it. Yeah, that was more or less as I predicted. Not really good. That hex is, is not... You can't get through there. I don't think he ever will. Okay. Looks like we got some more battleships. These are um, the battleships that were coming in from ADAC last turn. They are now in place at Pearl, and they are getting upgraded just like I thought they would. Getting pretty good at figuring this stuff out now. So we got some units coming in on the map here. All right, that's it. I'd hate to be a Japanese engineer at Pegu right now. Yikes. Steel rain. Okay. So we're back. I would hate to be an engineer, a Japanese engineer in Pegu right now. That was brutal. Let's take a look at our numbers for today. So, uh, a total of six aircraft lost. Four Japanese, two allies. Here's the breakdown. Nothing... Nothing really noteworthy here. Okay. Uh, looking at the army loss points, this is surprising. The Allies took three loss points and the Japanese took 15. That's pretty uncommon to see Japanese taking more loss points than the Allies. But our friend Wearaway attacked in the hex that I said he'd never get through. And just like I predicted, he got blasted there. No ship sunk last turn. And we didn't hear any more sinking sounds, so as far as I know, those Japanese ships that were hit by the destroyers got away. For the total score now for this campaign, the Allies gained an additional 12 points, which brings the Japanese win ratio down to 1.629. So he's continuing his downward slide, fourth day in a row. Still got a minor victory right now. So, this won't take long at all. I looked at the combat report and I didn't see anything noteworthy there uh, for a second however I saw something really cool check this out light cruiser Abukuma is moving to truck that's a highly specific piece of information so um, now we know he's moving a light cruiser of some sort to truck who knows where it's actually at but we do know that it will be at truck at some point so granted that's not that important of a ship but if that was something bigger like uh, BB Yamato or or uh, Musashi moving the truck that might be something worth you know looking into going and checking that out right so that's cool that the second gives us that level of information and in the ops report the only thing I saw that was interesting to me was this all these ships at Pearl Harbor getting refit and if you recall last turn the all the battleships that were previously at ADAC arrived at Pearl, and now a significant number of them are undergoing a refit. Some of these are going to be very lengthy refits, like the one on the Arizona. This is a Pennsylvania-class battleship, and it's getting the same refit that the actual Pennsylvania is getting, where they basically really redo the whole superstructure and put in the twin turrets and all that other stuff, which is going to make it very effective once it's done but that refit takes 120 days to do so we won't see the arizona and the pennsylvania back in a fight for several months but makes me uh, happy to know that i kind of guessed correctly that he was relocating a lot of these ships to pearl probably to a move them somewhere else but b to do these upgrades so uh pretty cool all right that's all i got for those three reports let's just dive right on into the turn so we'll start in China, and the big story here is that uh, a, a couple things. We had a bombing campaign on Land Child this turn, which did inflict some damage, right? And the Japanese are now moving in. I still don't know what happened to that uh, unit that was supposed to be in reserve and pursuing into Land Child. It never did. I don't know why. I'm hoping that. Desert Wolf, by now, will have figured that out for me. 
down here in this hex just to the west of Changte, the Japanese foolishly attacked the Allied positions here. And as you can see, the Allied position, or the Chinese more specifically, hardly took any kind of damage at all. The casualties were extremely low. Disruption fatigue were almost not affected. And the Japanese took 3-1 to one casualties on this attack. Uh, I've been saying it for a while. This whole bottom part of China is impassable to the Japanese player. Desert Wolf has established himself on all these times 3 hexes. And I don't see with the stacking limits in place how a Japanese player could ever bring enough force to bear to blast the way through down here. Because he's, he's basically... Desert Wolf is running right at the stacking limit for every single hex. So... The Japanese just can't bring enough troops in here to overwhelm that, especially here. Uh, yeah, there's some supply issues, sure, but uh, I don't see the Japanese ever breaking through down here. They're going to have to get asymmetrical like this guy and try to flank around. And I don't even think that's going to be possible with as slow as the movement is through this rough terrain. Uh, I wouldn't want to be the Japanese player down here right now. This is their only real avenue of advance up here. Down here, they're going to be stuck. So, uh, in Burma, Thailand area this turn, we saw a massive bombing raid targeting a single unit here at Pegu. And if we look at the combat report on this, the losses that they were taking were astounding. Multiple raids producing this level of casualties or more. To the point where um, the Japanese were taking heavy, actual, destroyed units... Right, when you see this... Oh, there's a helicopter flying over my house. Sorry if you hear a weird a buzzing sound. Yeah, that's a loud helicopter. That's probably an offspring. I live right close to the base that I work at in the Air Force. And a lot of times, uh, Marine Corps offsprings from San Diego area fly over my house. And they're very, very loud. So, if you're hearing that in a microphone, it's an offspring flying over. Anyway. Uh, look at the amount of, of destroyed units that these bombing raids were were inflicting. And this is really bad. This is probably a lot of the reason why the Japanese took a lot of their loss points. Uh, and the thing is, Pegu, right, is clear terrain. So there's no cover for these guys. So they took heavy, heavy losses in this attack. And as a Japanese player, I don't know how you even defend against that unless you fly a ton of cap over that base. And that's not always easy to do because it's long range cap it's hard to put up but yikes the amount of uh, air power that ja the allies can bring to bear right now in uh, November 1942 is scary uh, now one thing I am noticing here uh, looking at this area is this at Chiang Mai look at that 200 Japanese fighters detected we did not know that before that's the first I've seen that but that's a lot of fighters so I would not be surprised if we see Weirwave get off his butt and do something around here for a change and put up a meaningful amount of resistance. But good lord, that's a lot of fighters. So I'm ho I'm wondering if next turn we see some sort of crazy air campaign in Burma. I'll be really excited to see what comes of this. That's a lot of fighters. So now we have to go all the way over to the Gilbert to see where the action is at now. Uh, again, we saw some big heavy bombing raids on Macon. I think Macon is weak right now. Super weak. I don't know that they've got um, much of a chance at all when when Desert Wolf elects to go after this base. Now, I've been kind of looking around to here, and I'm not really seeing any indication of... Uh, yeah, I'm not seeing an indication of where Desert Wolf is trying to invade next, right? His uh, All I have are these cr these clues, right? These little breadcrumbs. And nothing in here is really telling me much of anything at all. So it's either going to be Macon or Naru. And given how weak Macon is, I'm thinking he'll go after this now first because the bombing raids alone are, are just ravaging this base. Naru is probably a bit better defended than that. Uh, we also have this uh, old... Uh, this destroyed downs out here just looking for something, looking for some way to attack this or that but he hasn't had a lot of luck we got a patrol boat spotted up here uh make that two the the uh pby's have been eating these guys lunch every day getting bombs on them 
Uh, previously, we saw over 200 fighters at Millie, and now it appears that um, Weiwei has moved those fighters back, and I'm guessing he moved them to Kwajalein or something like Roy Namur or something like that, because he's probably tired of getting his aircraft blown up on the ground, because Millie is definitely within range of the Allied heavy bombers at Roy. So he pulled out of here, and he's just pushing his lines back, and we'll see which way uh, Desert Wolf wants to go. But I do think Macon will fall quickly. And the last thing I want to talk about before I end this turn is the fact that we'd see Japanese submarines spotted near the Aleutian Islands. This is the first time in this campaign since I've been watching it that we've seen Japanese submarines being active. But that's something that... Um, That's a wolf is going to want to be aware of, right? And then we're still waiting for him to figure out what he's going to do at Add to. We don't see any indication of minesweeping coming in here, nor do we see him making any moves on these dot bases, but I'm sure he'll do that. But at some point, this will all be wrapped up, and I don't really know what Desert Wolf's next plans are going to be. With the second that we got last turn on what's going on at Paramoshiro Jima. This does not look like a great base to attack, so maybe he's going to continue into the Kuril Islands somewhere. Maybe one of these lesser defended bases, but going into Paramashiro is not a good idea. Alright, so that's the turn. This one's nice, short, and sweet for you guys today. Um, I think next turn we're going to see something pop off here in Burma with all these fighters, so I'm looking forward to watching that turn. I actually have it in my possession, so I'm going to put this to video, video together, get it edited, you guys can watch it, and then we'll see what happens on November 6th. So until then, I'll catch you on the next one.